Russians are the flavor of the month. They're being a little persnickety. Let's talk about why. They're dying out too. Two particular problems are on the short-term forecast for the Russians. First things first, here's your draftable age at age 18 to 20. In five years, the number of potential draftees will drop by half. The Red Army with half the size it has is not a military threat to most of the countries that are around it. So if the Russians are gonna use military force to achieve what they want, they have to do it now. Second, the average age of male mortality is 59. The Russian technical educational system collapsed back in 1989, which means that the youngest cadre of Russian engineers who have the full suite of technical training are now in their 50s. In five years, they're gonna start dying in mass, and the Russians won't be able to maintain their infrastructure, their missile forces, their army, their electricity system. So if they're going to move, they have to move now, and here's where they're moving. This is Eurasia on its side, north at the top, or north on the right side, the green area, if you have to live in Russia, that's where you want to live. It's not too cold. I mean, it's still cold. But uh, you can live here. You can grow food here. This is the part of Russia that's worth having. You'll notice, however, that these big gaps on the periphery before you get to any sort of reasonable geographic barrier. The red zones are places you can hunker behind. Mountains, deserts, seas. What the Russians have always tried to do is to expand to that outer shell and then plug the access points, these gaps. Now, the Mongols like these two in particular, the Persians the next two, the Turks invaded multiple times through the next two, the Germans, of course, have never met a square, square foot of Poland they didn't enjoy marching across, Sweden invaded Russia through the Balts twice, and here, everyone with a boat has invaded Russia here. Canada, yes, yes Canada has invaded Russia through the White Sea. <laughs> if, with this degrading demography, the Russians can reach that shell, and concentrate their forces in those gaps, they're gonna last a lot longer. Otherwise, they're gonna be trapped in this wide open area where potential foes can get at them militarily, culturally, economically, you name it, from a number of access points. During the Soviet period, the Russians controlled all nine of these gaps. At the end of the Soviet period, they dropped from nine to two. With the seizure of Crimea earlier this year, they went to three. Six to go. Five of those gaps are in the West. And for the Russians to get those gaps, they don't have to just take over Ukraine. They also need to take over Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, half of Poland, half of Romania, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. I'm going to guess that there are a few people in this room who know where those places are, because this is a not a normal audience for me. How that will happen? There's a lot of ways it can go down. The Russians have all the tools here, and until the Germans are willing to dedicate troops to protect the Polish frontier, and just saying that out loud blows my mind, uh, the Russians do not see any meaningful resistance. The sanctions don't hurt them in a way that would make them reconsider. Remember, this is a country that is convinced that it's its last generation. It's gonna take a lot to get their attention, and financial sanctions won't cut it. <laughs>